Thank you. Um, first, let me say it's, it's really great to be here. This is a, a wonderful audience, and I feel we really have a historical day. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just an amazing gathering. Um, and uh, it's very hard to follow uh, Pedro's talk. I really greatly enjoyed his book. Um, I've known Pedro for a long time. I think we finished our PhDs around the same time that involved in this machine learning community. Um, and uh, you know, some of the things I was going to drill in on, I mean, Pedro went on and, and fully comprehensive. I think the whole thing around this digital model is really fascinating. Um, so I'll just begin by summarizing um, at a top level um, Pedro's book. Um, and um, it begins with a discussion about machine learning in daily life. And you've got a little bit of a synopsis here. But um, just the, the extent to which everything that we do is then being influenced and mediated um, by these algorithms. Um, you know, every, per, every product you buy. So we're, as consumers, engaging in behaviors. And on the other side of that interaction, um, there are companies designing things um, where the goal is to um, get data from us and extract it. Um, so in the literature, that's been called um, the digital exhaust or the data exhaust. And, you know, the metaphor is we do things for certain specific transactional purposes, and the background, um, unbeknownst to us, perhaps, that data is being captured, and then people are, on the other side, people are trying to figure out how to make businesses that can use it. Hence, all this excitement about machine learning, capturing the data that's often passively a byproduct of what users are already uh, doing, engaging in. And um, as, uh, as Pedro talked about with the, the digital model, um, that's kind of actually a narrow a narrow view of what this actual relation can be between um, people and their data, and actually more generally, people and algorithms. Um, so I think with this, uh, the idea of the, uh, the digital model and the personal model that, that Pedro's talked about, um, I'll extend it in a few ways. Um, one is that um, more generally, what I think we really have is a relation between people and uh, agents. Okay? Um, and so it's not, for me, it's not just, um, you know, we're having a model of ourselves and we're working on managing the model, really what we're doing is making a software agent that knows as much of us as possible, and in the limiting case here is it's a, you know accurate, faithful model that can almost be a proxy and represent us, but more generally, it's a, you know, a robot, and it's our own robot. It's our own genie, and it's able to be programmed, interacted with us in the most natural ways, and do everything we want it to do. Um, so you know, knowing everything about us is one of those things. And when you think about that kind of an agent, you think it's sort of like if you had um, you know, ideal assistant or chief of staff or something like that. You want them to know, or, or even employee and team member, you want them to know everything possible that you know so that they can basically be there for meetings when you're not, so they can act on your behalf. So um, this two-way investment, I think, is really interesting, and it gets back at um, many of the topics today. Um, you know, instead of it being just full automation, um, it's sort of the interaction between AI and IA, or um, the, sort of the um, uh, you know, humanistic intelligence. Uh, that we had in, in the previous talks. So I think we're going to have a world that's barely being expressed right now and exposed, which is um, agents all around, and they're not just passive in the background. Um, they're, they're, if we don't do anything, they'll do the best job that they can. And um, to the extent that we want to interact with them, we're encouraged to make them better, give them more information, interact with them, and treat them as our sort of true agents and proxies in every sense. So I think we'll start seeing that um, as a whole new product line. Right, new, new product features in every single thing. So wherever prediction, wherever you're seeing machine learning today, um, it's often in the background. You're going to start seeing whole new features supporting extended levels of interaction between people and, and these systems. Um, you see a little bit today in things like um, Siri and Cortana where you can explicitly say, you know, this is, my, uh, this is where I live. This address is my home. Um, you know, this person is my wife. And then you can say, you know, call my wife. Um, it's a small little example, um, but we're going to see more and more of that. And, and in order to really do that, it's not just a matter of simple forms of machine learning, um, you know, data recommendations and sort of forming the basic forms of power. It really gets into very large amounts of inference. Um, it's another thing that I think is all the excitement of deep learning, and I think it is truly exciting. Um, most of it is really about uh, basic forms of uh, pattern recognition, pattern classification, um, uh, function optimization. And many of the things we talk about in terms of our broader scale intelligence, which we're getting to now, but many of these things are, you know, they're much, they're much larger. They're multi-step interactions, longer range, multiple things brought together. And Pedro talks about that when he's talking about all these integration, these different methods. Um, so I think that, um, I mean, there's incredible breakthroughs happening now, and we're really just getting, getting started on it. Um, I think one other, um, one other thing that's interesting on the business side is now as our business has become managed by more, and run by more and more of these algorithms, um, you know, fewer and fewer people, more and more algorithms, then there's some really interesting questions around who manages the algorithms. Um, I think that's going to be another major trend for business. Um, you know, companies, uh, if you talk to people running, you know, large companies, 
there are more and more of these algorithms with their parameters and assumptions being built in that's driving much of the behavior. They're responsible for most of the returns, and people have no idea what's going on with them. You know, there's parameters that some data scientist somewhere is playing with, and the CEOs have no idea, and yet that's driving half the revenue. Um, it's driving policies, um, and maybe even doing sort of accidental errors can happen or intentional errors can happen, and no one has control. So I think that's another really interesting theme um, for the future. Um, I think the, um, maybe I'd just like to uh, conclude... Uh, conclude here um, by saying that uh, I really am very, very excited. We talked about is this uh, is machine learning, machine intelligence, deep learning. Is it uh, you know is it overhyped? And as uh, Professor Hinton said, maybe it's underhyped. Um, I'm going to go on a limb and I say I do think it's underhyped. Um, not just deep learning, but but all the machine intelligence. Um, I think that we really are right now closer to what was sort of 1993. Um, and we can see this web thing was coming, and there's the first companies, and you're saying, God, are there really going to be that many dot-com companies? And the answer is there's that many and more, and everything's going to be a dot-com company. Um, I think we're like that again, but we're, I think we really are at the cusp of that, um, and I think the, it's, uh, the significance is, is far more profound. So it's great to be here, and thank you all.